Hello, my name is Nicole Carson Boney and I'm a portrait photographer. For this ballet concept, I wanted to explore the relationship between fire and ice using the same ballerina. In this video, I'm going to show you how I designed and made both of her outfits, how I photographed her in my home studio, and then how I edited this award-winning portrait. But before we go any further, please do me a quick favor and click the like and subscribe buttons below. I was so fortunate to have the opportunity to work with my model, Alexandria. She is a truly gifted ballerina and she makes her art look so graceful and effortless. But she is also a strong and highly trained athlete and so much fun to be around. I went to my favorite local fabric store called Sass Fabrics in search of fiery orange and cool blue fabric. I wanted to use the same model for both ballerinas to emphasize the duality of fire and ice. I found this orange knit lace fabric with this cool circular design for the dress. Then I found a matching solid orange fabric for the dress's lining. I was looking for a thicker ice blue knit fabric to make a turtleneck bodysuit that would be worn with icy blue stretchy jeans on my ice ballerina. I was super excited to find this light blue knit fabric with a sweater-like texture that wasn't too thick. And I found the perfect pair of stretchy skinny jeans in this icy blue color at my local thrift store called Goodwill. I wanted the bodysuit to feel like a warm sweater but still showcase the ballerina's figure and not be too warm. So I gave it a turtleneck neckline and then added full gathered sleeves. I designed the dress to be short and flowy to give lots of movement on my dancer. I used Simplicity Pattern 8916 for the top of the dress. I wanted it to be fitted through the bodice and waist. I lined the lace with the solid knit fabric. Using these soft knits would make the dress really comfortable and easy for my model to move in. I basically cut both layers of the skirt as large squares and then I offset them from each other to give that flame-like look. I wanted Alexandra's hair to be full and wavy. I curled her hair using my curling wand. While the hair was still warm, I kept it in its curled shape and clipped it to her head. Then the hair could cool while in the curled position. Once I curled all of her hair, it was time to unleash the curls. I find it works best to undo one curl at a time. I loosely separated it into smaller sections and retwisted it with my fingers to hold its original curl shape. Then I generously sprayed each row of curls with hairspray to lock them in place. For the top sections, I curled up and away from her head to get the most lift without having to do a lot of teasing of the hair. I also part the front to one side and curl both sides of her hair away from her face. Hair is such a fun design element. I find the more full and exaggerated it is, the more visual impact it has in the portrait. I converted the guest suite of my home to my portrait studio. The room is 11 by 15 feet, which isn't quite deep enough for photographing dancers. So I converted my living room into a temporary photo studio with a portable backdrop stand. As my key light, I used a Canon Speedlight 600EX inside a Westcott Apollo softbox. I made a cover for the softbox out of two layers of white fabric cut from a bed sheet. I point the flash into the softbox, which provides a soft, beautiful light. I have a second speed light pointed at the ceiling beside where I stand when shooting. This light bounces off the white ceiling and provides a subtle amount of fill light to the front of the model. I placed a third speed light behind my backdrop. I use a MagMod MagSphere to help spread the light on the ceiling. This showers down a soft hair light on my model. For the photo shoot, I set up two of my light gray 9 by 12 foot backdrops. I included a link in the description below to my DIY tutorial video I made that shows my favorite method for hand painting my canvases. I was super excited to rent the new Canon R5 camera and the R5 24 to 105 lens for this photo shoot. I wanted to take them for a test drive and see how they measure up to my EOS R. What I love most about this camera are the 45 megapixel files. This makes a huge difference when I'm creatively combining portraits. I also found the shutter button to be very fast and responsive, making it easy to time with my dancer's leaps. I see fire as explosive, unbridled energy that always rises. So my fire ballerina needed to be in an explosive position like in the split jump. I photographed my model jumping several times to get just the right position. Alexandra is so strong and flexible, she nailed it every time. She didn't have to jump very high, just focus on having really good form, which was super easy for her. In contrast to fire, ice is solid, heavy, and grounded. I envisioned my ice ballerina kneeling on the ground in this graceful position. The result is this visual relationship of fire trying to take flight while ice is attempting to keep it grounded. 
The challenge would be having the ice ballerina holding on to the leg of the fire ballerina. To get this effect, I photographed my hand holding on to my model's leg at the same angle. Once I was done photographing my model and had eaten some dinner, I went back with the same lighting and photographed the flowing fabric. I set up the shot and then had my husband press the shutter button for me while I threw the fabric to get the shapes I was looking for. I like to import my photos into Exposure X6 for culling and organizing. I use the color tags to identify my favorites. Once I've selected a favorite, I export a PSD copy to Photoshop for editing. As you can see, my dancer extends past my backdrop, but I wasn't concerned about that during the photo shoot. This is one of the unique challenges of shooting in nine foot ceilings. What I find works best is to create a path around my subject and then paste them onto their own layer. Then I take a photo of the backdrop without a model in front of it and blend it in to expand my background. I also clipped out the fabric throws I liked best and added them on their own layers. This also allows me to move the subject and additional elements around in the composition independent of each other. Once I decided on their placement, I painted in their shadows on a separate layer. On my fire ballerina, I added a few extra pieces of hair from other shots to add to the flame-like shapes. On my ice ballerina, I clipped out and added the photo of my hand and was able to easily blend it in under her sleeve. My last step in Photoshop was to add the darker vignetting to help focus the viewer's attention on the ballerina's faces and expressions. Then I went back into exposure and added my final color grading to my layered Photoshop file. I made a few modifications to two of my favorite alien skins, which are Kodak Ultra Color 100 UC and Golden Hour Orange. I had a hard time choosing between these two final portraits as my favorite. I like the dynamic pose of the ice ballerina on both of her toes, but I also like her kneeling on the ground, emphasizing the contradiction to fire. I ultimately chose this one. Here are a few additional portraits I equally love from the photo shoot. As a former ballerina myself, I am passionate about creating fine art dance portraits, and I submitted this portrait to the International Portrait Masters Award and Accreditation Program, and I am so excited to have won a silver award for it. And I cannot thank Alexandria enough for her collaboration on this fun project, and it's such an honor to see it recognized. If you like this video, please do me a quick favor and click the like and subscribe buttons below. Then I can keep taking you behind the scenes with me to my creative photo shoots.